Welcome to this session on the Systematic Review Accelerator, also known as the SRA. Today's session will be a short introduction and demonstration of a few of the tools. I'm Sarah Baitup, one of the faculty librarians for Health Sciences and Medicine at Bond University. Today I'm presenting from Bond and would like to acknowledge the Kumbumere people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which the university now stands and pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. The Systematic Review Accelerator is a suite of automation tools built to make conducting all types of evidence reviews or synthesis easier and faster. These tools were designed and developed by Justin Clark, who is the Research Enhancement Manager at the Inst Institute for Evidence-Based Healthcare, and he's also a Cochrane Information Specialist. The tools were coded by software developers Matt Carter and Connor Forbes. So here we are on the homepage of the Systematic Review Accelerator. In order to use these tools, you don't need to log in, although you can optionally do that if you'd like to save your data. So these tools are laid out in the progression of the review. So at the very top here, we have the methods wizard, which is a tool that helps you write the methods section of your review. Um, I'll pass over the next three because uh, we'll demonstrate those in just a minute. The deduplicator is a tool that helps you deduplicate a set of records. So after all your database searching is finished, you'll then have a single group of records that you can compile in EndNote and then put into the deduplicator, which will help you uh, focus on the records that are duplicates. The Screenatron is a tool that helps you quickly go through the titles and abstracts for your title and abstract screening. And then the Disputatron is a tool that will allow you to compare the screened records from two different reviewers. So after two people in the review team have finished their screening, um, you can compare the files to find and resolve the conflicts. The spider site tool is one that you might use at the end of your review. Once you have your final set of articles to be included, um, you can put those articles into the spider site to, to then do forward and backward citation searching. So you'll see all of the records from the reference list of all of your articles, as well as newer articles that have cited back to that group of uh, included studies. For most of the tools, we have help files, um, and this just steps you through using the tool as well as creating the files, such as how to use EndNote um, to create an XML file. Um, down below, there's a page to cite the Systematic Review Accelerator tools. If you decide to use any of the tools in your papers, you might consider citing the Systematic Review Accelerator tools. Um, and down below, there's a form if you have any ideas or feedback to give the team. So to begin with, we'll take a look at the Word Frequency Analyzer. So this tool is helpful when you have a set of seed articles and you'd like to start building your search. Um, so you might have discovered a few articles that look highly relevant and you'd like to see which words appear in those articles in order to create your search. So for convenience, I've compiled a list of five articles here in PubMed um, that, I'm, that I'll investigate. So in order to use these articles in the Systematic Review Accelerator tools, I firstly need to create an XML file containing their details. So to do that, I'm going to send them through EndNote. Um, so to get these out of PubMed, I'll click Send To and choose the Citation Manager, um, capture all of the results on this page, which is five, and then click Create File. Once I have that file, I can open it up in EndNote and select all of these records, go up to the File menu, choose Export, And from here, I'm going to leave the file name as is, seed articles is fine, um, but this second option is really important. So I need to change the file type from text to XML, this one at the bottom. Uh, the output style doesn't matter at all, uh, but importantly, I need to leave this box selected so that I get the five articles, oh, five records that I've chosen. I can go ahead and create and click save. And back in the Systematic Review Accelerator, um, I can then upload my file. Before I do that, I'll just mention you have some settings that you can tweak if you'd like to. So by default, um, these are the settings. So you can choose to um, change the amount of words that constitute a phrase. If you think you might have longer phrases, you could up that. Um, you can change the word limit. So how many times a word has to appear in all of the records to be included in this word frequency analyzer and then the weightings. So by default, everything is weighted evenly between title and abstract or keywords, but you can change that if you need to. So I'll cancel out of that the settings and then go ahead and browse to the file I just created, which is on my desktop. There it is, so seedarticles.xml. 
I'll open that file and upload it. So the output of the word frequency analyzer is to count up how many times the words appear in the articles. So you can see one word per row. So per row you have a column for unique instances. So of the five articles that I put into this tool, all five of them contain the word surgery. Um, for, uh, the word surgery appeared four times within the titles of the articles and 18 times within the abstracts and once within the keywords for a cumulative point of 23. Um, so you can see that this is just an addition of all of these different fields. Um, by default, it's sorted by the points value, but you could change that if you wanted to sort it by something else, for example, title. I'll just put it back to points for now. And as you scroll down, you might see some words that are pretty obvious to include. Um, but as you scroll down a little bit further, you might see, come across some words that you hadn't um, thought of initially that might be revealed to you through the word frequency and analyzer. So here is the search that I created based on the words in the word frequency analyzer um, and you can see some of those words popping into this search. So once you've finished building your search you might like to test it against a set of articles that you need it to find in PubMed. Um, so in order to do that we can use the search refinery tool. Um, so to start using the search refinery I just need to copy the search string that I want to compare against the articles and paste that into this first field here. Um, I do need to fix up the spaces so um, this tool doesn't work super well if I don't fix that up so I just need to remove the spaces um, oh sorry the line breaks around my concepts um, so that looks pretty good and then I also need to supply a list of PubMed IDs that I want to check against this search um, so I'm just going to use the same search from PubMed as I had before. So now that I have all of these um, citations, I can just uh, get the list of PubMed IDs out. So I'll go ahead and choose Save, um, ensure that PubMed ID or PMID is selected from the drop down menu and click Create File. So that's given me a little text file with the PubMed IDs. So I can copy those now and paste them into the bottom section here. And once those are all paste it in place, I can then click on visualize to see how this search performs in picking up these PubMed IDs. So this is querying PubMed live um, and it's going to show us the results. Okay, so this search finds 1,539 citations. Um, this box lets me know that I was looking for five citations to be found and in fact all five citations were found by this search. Um, interestingly though, you can use this this refiner for a little bit more. So as you scroll in, you'll notice that each of the words from my search are represented here. And it shows me from the branch how many uh, citations are being pulled in by this word, and then how many of my seed articles are found by this word as well. So if you find that maybe a word is pulling in a lot of citation, citations into your final search results set, but not pulling in many of your seed articles, you might consider that word for removal. So that can be a good way of trimming down your search. So back to my search now. Um, if I'm at the end of my search now and I've refined my PubMed search as much as um, needed, I'm quite happy with that. Um, of course, I will, I will want to search other databases and we can use the polyglot search tool to help us with that. Um, so to get started, I'll go ahead and copy my search again. And head to the polyglot search. So polyglot will take uh, either a Medline on Ovid search or a PubMed search. So I'll go ahead and paste my PubMed search in here and as I scroll down you can see the list of databases below. So these are the databases that this search can be translated into. Um, so if I open out Embase as an example you can see here what polyglot's done. It's just basically um, updated the syntax to suit this database. Um, the only thing that the polyglot can't do is it cannot check for subject headings. Um, so that's something I would have to do manually, um, go into Embase and into the mTree um, database to have a look and see whether these subject headings matched up and then amend them if they did or remove them if there's no equivalent. Um, so to do that, I would just click on the copy to keyboard button on the right and then go back to my Word document. paste this search down below um, and then head into Embase to make 
to check and make my updates. So that was quite a whirlwind tour of the Systematic Review Accelerator and a few of the tools. Um, if you'd like to test it out yourself, I've got a link here. I've got a link and a QR code to the Systematic Review Accelerator website, as well as the help files, um, and also the training page from the Institute of Evidence-Based Healthcare. So the Institute um, offers longer sessions on how to use the tools and also how to build searches. So if you're interested in that, you might like to check that out. So thank you for listening today and I believe we now have time for some questions.